move both or see if they can trade one for one. Yeah, and this is one of the difficulties when trying to do pick and ban against Coma and SKT because most teams will have players they have to pick and ban around who don't necessarily have complete champion pools. But every player on SKT has a complete mastery of the champions in the meta. So that allows SKT to leave a lot of things up to trade. So for instance, the shielding champions, Lulu, Ivern, and Karma, you need to prevent people from getting two out of three of those usually. So with the fact that G2 hasn't banned any and neither has SKT, could end up being very favorable for SKT in this draft. I'm expecting the Lee Sin to come in as the last ban for G2 Esports, unless they want to trade that early rotation Lee Sin for something else, because Trick is not the biggest Lee Sin player. Yeah, well, here's the thing. We also wonder how much SKT has trained Ivern. It's not a champion Peanut has played at all during the regular season. Trick was one of the first junglers to bring it out in the European LCS in the early adopting phase, and that could be a good pick in the Lee Sin if they decide to go that route. I mean, Ivern was barely used in LCK at all by any teams. But in Europe, it became a huge pick towards the end. Now, both these supports we mentioned in Karma and Lulu have been removed. When you ban one on blue side, you kind of show you want to first pick the other one, and that forced SKT to get rid of Lulu. But, Jet, the champion you mentioned. Yeah, that would give them a large lead on the bot side if they didn't have one of the pushing shielding supports. And they kind of show the Ivern, but you can tell there is still a little bit of hesitation because they don't know if SKT is going to prioritize that pick. So I think G2 is hoping to go for the Ash as kind of the best in class marksman down there and hope that SKT doesn't take Ivern with these next two picks. It would be a surprise if SKT locked in Ivern. So I think what G2 is doing is smart, kind of challenge them. You got to show it first here in the very first game. Ash as well, quick touch on her. Safe as laning AD carry right now. You can pick her against absolutely anything down in the bottom lane. And Wolf and Bang is a dual lane you really need to respect because they, they've been playing so well this split. And I think this is really good from G2. Challenge was issued by G2 regarding Ivern and SKT have locked in Graves. So gonna allow that Ivern through on the G2 side. Yeah, I do think this is interesting because Graves and Lee Sin I feel like her Peanut's two best junglers. I think his Lee Sin is better, but Graves would be a better pick into Ivern. So I'm really curious to see where G2 responds with this. Funny story, actually. Uh, Whoa. Did he lock in the lead? He did. That is a bit of a surprise from, uh, from Trick. He has, of course, played Lee Sin during the split, but it was never one of his favorite picks. I like to call Trigger level 6 jungler, like Graves, Rengar, Ivern, champions where you farm to level 6, and then you really start having an impact on the map. Lee Sin now, this tells me that G2 wants to be very active early on and try and really see if they can get some advantages through the first few minutes. A lot of pressure on Trick. Three times this year he's played Lee Sin, two wins and one loss. And he's going to be challenging SKT. Let's take a look. Phase two bans. Um, both bottom lanes have been locked in and jungler, so solo lane is left and immediately the Fiora taken away. Just to talk about Fiora very quickly here, Expect is a guy they didn't get to show a whole lot at Worlds last year on the international stage, but now after another split, he's he's honestly improved quite a lot, and the team trusts him on carries. They put him on carries up in the top lane. SKT obviously been scouting that, and they actually respect him, respect here. Yeah, and as far as the draft phase goes as well, there's the solo lanes for both teams that have yet to be locked in, and in these situations, I very heavily favor red side because they'll get to power pick one and then counter pick the next one. I think they're going to go Shen with the bans here, or Gragas as uh, one of the picks here for Huni because they're banning away GP, which is a very traditional Shen counter, and Fiora does well against both the tanks, so I'm 100% expecting Shen or Gragas. I definitely feel like SKT is going to want to get some form of initiation. Shen isn't that great as a primary initiator, so I'd put a higher percentage on Gragas. They have the Varus, but aside from that, it's not that good. SKT, more than any other team, though, is able to play with low to no initiation. It's Galio! Oh, okay, yes. like it, I like it. So G2 removed that Shen we talked about. And then suddenly SKT just pivot and say, you know what? We now want to play Galio. Would Faker play that in the mid lane, or is this definitely <laughs> Huni in the top lane? It is a flex. This is something the analyst desk was talking about as well. You can, but I definitely feel like right now it's best served in the top lane. It's also really good into tank matchups because of his tremendous wave clear and the way his Q scales. So I would see it as a top laner, but we'll have to see. And now we've next turn locked in here. Huni will have the chance to try and counter pick it if there is a ranged top laner available for him to take against it. If he doesn't want to play the Galio, but Galio does have a wave clear. He can play really safe and passive in his laning phase. And then Faker might get his chance to counter pick the Orion. Safe and passive if it's in the top lane. Under the assumption, Trick and Expect do not try gank him. Another early game laner, SK Telecom with their last pick. Will it be the Syndra? I mean, Syndra has been 
the highest presence mid laner on this patch. Presence means percentage of games picked or banned. And also it's something that is often banned against the best mid laners. And most mid laners need to prepare picks just to play against Syndra. So the fact that G2 went through this entire draft phase, and you could argue the Fizz would be a top lane ban, but essentially threw almost no bans towards Faker, is scary in itself. And Syndra is best in class in the mid lane. Yeah, sadly for Perks, he couldn't take Syndra himself, even though it is one of his signature picks, because then Echo would have been available for Faker as a counter pick. So he had to go for Orianna as his blind mid laner. I'm excited though, because there's so many fun lanes to watch right now. Renekton against Galio up in top lane. Massive skill matchup in the bottom lane between Sven, Mithy, and Wolf and Bang. That's gonna be so exciting. Yeah, how much can these teams play around the bottom side? And how aggressive is that bottom side willing to go? The Ash Zyra has so much level six potential, but so does the Varus in Misfortune, so it can be very explosive when we get around seven minutes into the game. Round for G2 with the Renekton and the Lee Sin combination in the top half. I think they're expecting to be explosive. I feel like they're going to come out the gate swinging, try to send a message here on the international stage, try to send a message that they're here to play. If G2 wanted to play slow and steady, they would have locked in Ivern. They're going for action with this comp here. And I think that's the big wild card here for G2 is what level is Trix Lee Sin, because Lee Sin's not one of those champs you pick up in a couple of weeks. This is something you have to spend your career mastering. So I really want to see how good it is right now for Trick at MSI. Uh, we all want to see that. And for G2, they're going to need Trick to show up. There's the team composition on your screen for G2 Esports. G reigning European LCS champions, and of course, SKT, the reigning world champions, defending MSI champions and LCK champions as well. They just keep accumulating titles. It's a question of how many they can get. Always pressure on SKT going into a tournament because it will be a massive upset and disappointment if they don't suddenly win. That's, uh, the, I guess, the only problem when you just keep <laughs> winning and winning and winning. <laughs> Talk about a first world problem of note there. Uh, to give you guys a quick update, uh, there is a brief pause. As we've loaded into the game, you can see the technicians on stage there chatting to Sven, it looks like. We'll get an update for you. In a moment or two, when I look across Summoner Spells, there's nothing really that jumps out super surprising to me. Perks got himself that Flash Cleanse. Yeah, I think Cleanse here on Perks is a small surprise. And uh, normally you do that if you're against like an Elise jungle as well with Syndra. Uh, now he's just really respecting uh, Faker's setup, but also later on he's, he's respecting Varus. And he's engaged with ult because there is a lot of CC on the side of SKT. And as an Orianna, you don't offer that much mobility. If you're caught once in a fight, you're most likely to die. Yeah, get caught, get killed. It's going to be problematic for Perks. Um, in terms of the pause, uh, Sven is just querying and double checking his masteries and runes that have loaded up. Yeah. The team is busy reviewing that one, and I'll keep you updated as I get more information. Yeah, it looks like they had the League official on stage checking to see uh, if it was done in error, if it was done by mistake, or any of those things, and then the referees will then apply the rules from there. The team compositions will obviously stay the same, and it'll b basically just be the question of whether or not he has Warlords or if he actually wants to go Fervor. I'd imagine uh, with a lot of the attack speed Varus builds, Fervor is often the choice, since yes. I've seen Blade of the Room, King, and Hurricane so many times. So Warlords is his current uh, Keystone Mastery right now, so we'll see if that ends up changing. Yeah, time, uh, only time will tell. But in terms of the early game, we know that Trick wants to be proactive. He's on the Lee Sin. We know he obviously can combo with the Renekton up in the top lane or a lot of the CC down bottom, but let's talk about some of the pathing and where these junglers could start in some of those games to Fisher. I mean, the thing with Lee Sin is you can often set up ganks in uh, all three lanes. Like, you are so mobile, and if you look at it, comes come here from, from G2 Esports, like you have Zyra in the bottom lane, you have Renekton in the top lane, both offer CC, and if one of the lanes are getting pushed in, you can go for that gank. But traditionally, you would see like Trick sit down here like, Maybe start on his blue buff, get a get a red buff on the bottom side, and then look for an opening bot lane, or go back to base and then go top after. You don't have to gank a Renekton lane pre-6. You can wait and then see if you can set up a dive. But Galio is not easy to kill on the turret because he has so many ways to just stay alive. Yeah, the damage reduction on the Galio W is often underrated as far as how much of a defensive laner he can be. And if you look at the way SKT has actually played a lot of this year, Huni has been put in very defensive positions very often and kind of excelled in that. You th people were, were very worried about whether Huni would be able to adapt to the SKT play style or not uh, because he was going to have to play tanks and he might not necessarily get a lot of jungle help. And he was, which is one of the most impressive things. And it allows SKT to kind of still absorb the pressure onto Faker. If too much goes into him, the side lanes start to excel. And that's been just so good for SKT this year. Yeah. Huni has said himself, he does not need to be a big carry on this team. 
Because if you look around, you have Faker, Peanut, Bang. Like, there are star players everywhere, which means the more controlled and quote-unquote passive tank Huni is actually very effective. And it's fun to see, though, in the very first game at MSI, the guy used to just playing carries is now in Galio in his first game. Yeah, Galio in his first game playing a number of tanks, obviously, over in the LCK. I have got an update that League officials have investigated, and uh, unfortunately, there's a misclick from Sven in terms of... Great start, G2. And, yeah. you Player know, may maybe it is some of those nerves, you know. I, I, I don't want to go too far forward. Sven, who's the, one of the rocks for G2 Esports, arguably one of the best players, if not the best player in Europe, has been for a long time. Yeah. Far and away the best ADC, and now he's going to be starting at a slight disadvantage, both in-game and maybe in psychology. Sven was one point away from winning MVP in the EU LCS regular season. If they want to take Solas in this mistake, the fact that Warlord's Bloodlust is still a common marksman mastery, it's not like he's running in there with Windspeaker's Blessing or something, <laughs> or Deathfire Touch on Ash. So he can still have a solid game, but this is a very difficult thing. If you wonder about G2 and whether they can keep their morale up in this game, that's a very tough start. Have to look at his level one here from G2 oh Esports. Boy. They're already betting in the fight. Faker! Oh my god, have they got him? First blood onto Faker! And Trick as well. If you're wondering about a snowballing jungler, it could very well be that Lee Sin. That's a way to bounce back from a mastery mistake. Yeah, what a start now here. Let's see, Wolf is also hiding around the Barshes. He will spot the guys from G2. Faker sitting in a position where he can't actually see around the corner in that little side brush. And he did not place a ward in the river, so he didn't notice G2 until they actually turned around and were right in front of him. Baker keeps accumulating titles. He's had three world championships, an MSI champion, and now the fastest first blood in MSI history. <laughs> right there. That is a legendary yeah, player. Legendary I'm, player. Yeah, I'm so excited to hear you say stats like that because I was shot down for some of my exciting stats. You about dragons. <laughs> ULCS finals. We'll get to talk about them. And yes, there's a replay of the vision. He sees right there, Mithy just in front of him, and then suddenly you can't really get out. It's a really perplexing play for me from Faker there. Normally the mid laner pushes up the mid lane so people can't sneak into that brush. So Faker, as the mid laner, knew he had no vision in the mid lane, yet was still waiting in that brush. Normally if someone's gonna wait in that brush, you need someone in the mid lane. So that is just a misplay by SKT and Faker. Down the bottom lane here, we get MF against Zyra. This is funny enough, a lane we saw all the time around the end of Worlds and start of their spring split as well. Then we received some nerves, especially to Zyra. They were pretty impactful in the lane phase, but now returning once again. It is very much a skill matchup. And it's funny because Wolf has been one of the best performing members on SKT this split, but his partner as well has been doing so well. Yeah, thinking about the way SKT plays, Bang actually has the best stats of anyone on the team. His damage percentage is so much higher above the norm than it is in the mid or the top lane. His CS differentials are the same, so oftentimes Faker demands so much attention. And in the past, Bang and Wolf were just this bottom lane that you could throw a lot at, and they'd be resilient. Yet this year, they're doing a lot more aggressive, proactive plays and taking over games in their own right. I'm gonna have to bounce back from a small deficit this time around, chat. Um, Trick is not yet backed to spend that first black gold. Gonna do looks to be a good first clear in this bottom quadrant of the jungle. Wants to go towards the top side here once he actually comes back from base. Look for a potential gank as well. Now, what you have to remember is when you have Renekton, you're going to be pushing the lane. And that always opens up for your jungle to also invade the enemy top side jungle. So, obviously, with now Lee Sin ending on that side of the map near the Renekton. Might set up a play for G2 Esports, but Peanut, well, he's saying, fine, I'm just gonna take the bottom side instead. Yeah, and he's already hard farmed so well. He's incredibly experienced up, and with the bot side being empty, he has a good chance of trying to flank around the bottom side if he wanted to. Yeah, he knows Lee Sim will be top now by putting that ward on the Crux, the camp that we actually see taking the least of these jungle camps, because if you have done that full clear on the bottom side, Raptor, Red, Crux, then, well, you have no reason to be on the bottom side. So he's calling now, watch out, Huni. Top side is where Lee Sim will be. And you have to now, of course, play a little bit, you know, scared, or at least respectful. Yeah, we'll play a little bit safe. And Huni, you can see the wave pushing deep into it. He knows Faker's flash is down, so he's trying to do this war jump gank. Oh, Sonic Wave connects. Faker manages to get some damage back in the tower. Tags on a trick. Perk's just not in range. Wave is pushing against it. Now, that looked very, very risky from Trick, just jumping in without any backup. But he's just poking down Faker, trying to force him back to base early to give the advantage to Perk. Lee Sin can still go back in his jungle, get some HP back. Bot lane trading as well. Oh, a lot of damage going down onto Bang and Wolf. Mithy actually 
aggressively walking through everything Wolf was throwing down. And as it stands, even Steven CS wise. Faker with that first blood, currently down 10 CS. That uh, little gank from Trick as well, helping out in his favor. Yeah, I do think that Peanut attempted to match. He also went to shove the mid lane. Now four minutes and 40 seconds, Trick just at level four. Uh, Peanut making another arrival in the mid lane. And Faker's actually ghosting, uh, but realizes there's nothing there. He's gonna find any opportunity this time around. All right, five minutes in, it's about an 800 gold lead here for G2. Trick's just gone back for the second time. Still looking to set up some plays and taking a look through some of the itemization. A couple of control wards on the side of SKT and the forgotten chapter they propose. Yeah, the lost chapter is what Trick did the gank for. They pushed Faker back before he could get there. Faker instead settles for a Doran's ring and a refillable potion. So that's why Faker's actually doing another recall because he doesn't want to fall too far behind the item curve. If they have a prolonged laning phase and one guy has the mono regeneration from the lost chapter and the other doesn't, Faker would actually lose pressure in that lane. And before the game started, we talked about how mid lane push is so important when you want to play around, especially the bottom side, but also the top side because you can then roam first with your mid laner. Having that mana region advantage actually allows Perks to push the mid lane pretty hard here and just constantly try and force Faker to trade mana with him. When Perks then win wins out due to lost chapter, Perks might be able to roam first. And that can set up a play in the side lane for G2 Esports. I'm talking about that side lane. We've not actually looked at Expect and Huni much this game yet. Um, small advantage for Expect and the Renekton, somewhat expected. Anticipated in the Renek versus Renekton versus Galio. Shockwave just for some poking here. Good stun in reply. Perks ends up losing the trade despite being a level down. Yeah, that is not a good trade to lose there because he's so low that when Faker hits level six, he has a lot of all-in potential. And that's what Faker's threatening with right now. He's only level five, but if he hits level six, just goes and tries to flash all. That pressure. Oh, Trick has to flash away. Unleashed power oh, almost goodness. takes him down. Faker winning everything. That last minion refused to die right next to Faker. They actually gave him level six and would have fought would have forced Perks to flash before this one here. Faker knew he was going to hit that level six, and so he could just go all in for that trade. Really well played, and suddenly, you no know, trading mana against each other. It doesn't matter if you actually get the other guy to go back to base first. Mm -hmm. Kill threat is greater than mana. In yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We prefer killing. Kill threat. Well, kill, uh, killing someone is the greatest CC, I've been told, in League of Legends. And maybe killing Faker for first blood, you know, before a minute and a half, was a bad thing. Um, sent him into a bit of a rage to prove his point on a champion like Syndra who really can take over the early game if given the opportunities. Yeah, and I really want to see Trick get more involved. It, it really hurts G2, the fact that he went mid lane level five and had to burn his flash defensively because even if he's just trying to hit level six and wait to make that play, the kick is so much more threatening with flash up. So Trick falling behind the curve after picking up first blood. We just need to see now that G2 Esports are hitting level six across the lanes here really go for that kill in either top or the bottom lane. Now, Ash obviously needs a little bit of more experience, but then once you have level six, when you arrow as an Ash here, if the enemy bot lane refuses to flash, well then suddenly the jungler shows up and you're gonna get another kill, potentially even a tower. That should be an opening. Sven level six now, Trick on the bottom side, but he's spotted by these wards here from SKT. Really good deep vision, as we so often see from the Korea team. That's going to allow SKT to even out this early game. Peanut's also making his way down bottom. Yeah, this is all due to the deep vision that Peanut knows there's going to be an arrow on the bottom side. And then Bang will not flash it and he will actually take the fight instead. All right, Mithy's forced to back away. Very good flash. Gets out of range of the chain of corruption. Bang unable to lock anybody down. And here's Trick and Peanut both trying to alleviate the, the, the pressure in this lane. Yeah, and another example of how much these teams know the bottom lane matters. Peanut was killing Blue Buff and was about to hand it off to Faker, but knew he needed to get bottom lane for that Ash level 6 just so he could match that pressure from Trick. So often we would have seen a Renekton lane receive a gank by now, but as we talked about earlier, killing Galio is very, very difficult, and especially on the tower. So GG were looking for that bottom lane kill, but it's again spotted by Good Vision and Peanut. And also, we're going to take a step back. Trick playing Lee Sin, not one of his most played champions, if at all. Not only is the questions around, you know, how he's going to perform on the champion, but then the team also has to interact with it. Huni tries to land that Justice Punch, but pulls it just a little short and now expects under tower. Gonna do his best to farm And we haven't gotten to watch that lane much, but Huni is starting to take control. He was down about 15 CS at six minutes and now has pulled to a CS advantage ever since getting that triple Doran's, but they go oh, for the kill on a bang. Summon a heal's already used, exhaust comes down, bang, flashes out of the strangle thorns. Now Wolf is being forced back, the volley tags him out. Sven's gonna get another flash, and that's four summoners for only one. 
one of the reasons we have this Ash Syrah lane, hit level six, and then suddenly that kill pressure. We talked about having the jungler before. Obviously had Trick been here, that would have been one or two kills for G2 Esports, but they get the summoner spells, which now means if SKT do not swap the lanes around and move the AD carry support away from Sven and Mithy, then G2 Esports have a clear opening with teleport, with a gank, to just get another kill in that bottom lane. Luckily, SKT gonna be able to respond with some tools. Um, Huni sitting with teleports as well. Gonna have that ultimate to jump in and have that heroic entrance, if at all. But of course, those delays um, mean that it could play into G2's favor if they can get some of that burst damage down between the Lee Sin and the Orianna combos as well. We got 40 seconds on Sven's ulti right now. Mm -hmm. That is the timer that G2 are playing around. It's a timer SKT is playing around as well, because they know when that ulti is ready, they got to be careful. Exactly, and SKT may have a chance to preempt that. Bang has his ultimate up beforehand. If he can land that onto Mithy, who is flashless, while Peanut or someone else arrives with the gank, it can be a kill on the other side. So still a lot of bot lane focus in this yep. game. And you can see now, if you look at the minimap, Expect is running back to his lane. He's saving teleport despite losing a wave, knowing bottom lane is where we're going to make that play. Faker is down here as well, roaming early. Everyone is just ready for this potential 5 on yep. 5. That's what they're looking forward to. The hawk shot from Sven spotted Faker out. Look at the mini map for the vision. Faker takes the shockwave to the face and perks this time round stays out of range. Yeah, very good poke, but he's got to be careful now. Faker gets the stun. All right, stun connects. Insta cleanse. Perks has still got the flash though. Manages to move out. Unleash power comes down and perks flashes away from the collateral damage. Bottom lane here. Trick's been waiting for quite a while here. Wolf is showing himself. Sven can go Ash for the up. You just got to land it. Oh, Myth is playing bait. Myth is playing bait. He's been caught by the bullet time. Ash Shadow wants a bang. It's a fight on two fronts. But Wolf manages to throw out the double up. They've got the kill. G2 with their second of the game. And now they're backing away. Exactly the play we talked about. Send the jungler down now with no summoners from SKT. In the LCK, they so rarely actually swap the lanes around when the dual lane is under pressure. So they walk back into a lane with double CC and no flashes. And they got punished for it. Well, Perks, no summoners, but the stun doesn't connect. And that means Bang and Faker can't get a reply. Faker didn't place a Dark Spear, but here comes Galio. All right, heroic entrance. Hooney's on the rift. Where is Expect? He's decided not to engage, and he's able to back away. And I feel like SKT is actually overexpending themselves a little bit. Peanut was ganking mid lane as Bang and Wolf went for the bait on a Mithy. That is so rare for SK to do, to try and make an offensive play when they didn't have the Graves there yet. Peanut's still on his way down. That allows Trick to basically solo Wolf. Sven doesn't quite get the last hit, but it's still a positive trade for G2. And Huni started his teleport right in front of Expect. He got interrupted instantly. His TP is now on cooldown. This allows SKT now, oh sorry, it allows G2 to make another play in the bottom lane. We're waiting 20 seconds on that arrow from Sven just return and kill them again. Does it feel like there's a little bit of jitters on the SKT side? Some of these plays may be a little uncharacteristic. They're against the kings of Europe. Can you blame them? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a little uncharacteristic, even from the level one where Faker didn't prep his positioning and ended up getting first flooded and then trying to make the aggressive play before the jungler was there. And Huni not spacing his teleport properly and allowing him to get interrupted by expect. Those are not things you're used to seeing from SKT and G2 did capitalize, but then you still look at the gold and you're even. Yep, that is uh, always the thing about SKT. You get ahead in kills, but not necessarily in gold, but that's why again that play bot lane needs to happen one more time. If we pan the camera down to Sven and Mithy right now, You'll actually notice a control ward being placed just outside the screen. Just at the bottom, there's a control ward. This is, again, to set up another potential jungle gank. So SKT right now have zero vision behind Sven and Mithy. Map. Trick is coming from topside instead, though. Oh, don't even need that control ward. Five man die. Here comes Trick and Perks. It's a party in the bottom lane. Chain of corruption slowly starting to spread. Shockwave onto Wolf. Kick back. Double knockup. Double kill. G2. And look at the health bars on G2. That was clean. Not only do they get the double kill onto their middle, they also get first Turkle. And because Huni was in a recall pattern before teleporting, there is not even substantial pressure on either of the solo lanes, the natural counter to a five-man kink. G2 pulled that off beautifully. And still around the mid lane to hold here, but Huni with the big minion wave trying to take down this tower in time. The bottom lane from G2, they're on their way to the top lane. Gotta get up there. Might not make it in time, but it's still a good trade for G2 Esports. Oh, they did everything right here. The Ash Arrow trapping them against the wall, Trick landing his Sonic Wave on the further target, then Flash kicking into this combo right here, which allows 
perks to pick up the double cure with the dissonance. And this is why I really dislike that LCK teams refuse to swap the lanes around. Because this play was so easy to predict. TP advantage, Ash in the bottom lane, a jungler who can go down and gank you. No summoner spells, you will die and lose your tower. Swap the dual lane to the top side, prevent this and just trade towers instead. All right, ticked over, 15 minutes coming up. SKT were able to pick up the Cloud Drake down in the bottom lane and uh, up in the top, Expect Tower survived with a sliver of health. Looking at the minimap, there's support from Peanut and Wolf as they're making their way to shove in the tower. And as it stands, G2 are doing the same up top. Yeah, G2 right now are far ahead in tempo when it comes to pushing these side lane towers. They're already at the tier one in the top side. SKT just gets to the tier one in the bottom side. Yeah, and these situations can get messy because G2 has no reason to stop their push. They can get one. SKT is definitely going to get one, but they have a head start on the second one if they want it. They actually pull back here and they may be trying to start a push mid. One of the problems if you push all the way for the tier two tower as well is then by the time you actually then get to recall, the enemy team has already killed that bot tower. They already returned out on the map and you might actually then lose something in return. But right now, Rift Hell is the priority for the somewhat struggling Renekton that didn't win this lane. Yeah, I don't like this because SKT no. was in the turret trade game and giving up that inner turret for a Rift Herald, which we'll expect will have for 20 minutes, I don't think is worth it because G2 had enough gold to have item power spikes over SKT and this actually neutralizes that advantage. It makes the gold still touching distance for SKT. We're getting closer and closer to this mid game where the map is being opened up, two towers apiece, and now G2, how good can you play the map? You've got some mobility, you've got some tools available to you, but you're going up against the undisputed kings of the world when it comes to playing mid to late game. Exactly, when it comes to playing mid to late game. It's not the first time we've seen SKT fall down a few thousand gold in the early game and then bounce back anyway once the map is opened up and it's all about you know these big rotations and team fights. This is where SKT really shines. It's where G2 can shine in Europe, 100%. They are the absolute best mid to late game team we have. But now they need to show if that's good enough to actually take down SKT. Yeah, as of now, Bang is going to be able to take that top lane turret, actually giving SKT the gold lead, and G2, or not the gold, gold lead, turret lead and close in gold. So now the question is, where can G2 find the advantage? Do they continue to trade, or do they try and force another fight? Well, it feels like G2 have decided to split the map down in the bottom lane, trying to deal with those winds of war from Muniz Galio and expect alone up top, but they're not really going to be able to defend this way. No, G2 right now showing some inexperience and in playing against Galio. Galio off a great wave clear. He can sit and just fire his Q in the range, but expect my die. I expect going to die under the tower. SKT get the tower and another kill. You do not want to trade towers like this with minion waves against a wave clear champion on one side and obviously no wave clear, proper wave clear from a Renekton on the other side. It was too easy for Huni to walk in, fire a Q on the range minions, and they will just die. Just great play from SKT. They take control of at least the gold. They've got the tower control. They've got the dragon advantage, which actually will help them out. Cloud on this slightly more open map. And now G2, they have a Renekton and a Lee Sin that got them some advantages. But it's yeah. already been neutralized and lost. They were, the such they were able to play the slow game, set up the play over a series of minutes, burning summoner spells, getting the teleport advantage, and then pull off that two-man dive in the bottom side. But they just lost a whole bunch of it with just relatively simple macro mistakes, not understanding that the Renekton cannot defend 1v3 and have Expect still trying it while they had no answer on the other side of the map. They still have the Ash Arrow. They still have perks with the two kills. They need to try and orchestrate some plays. Sadly for G2, everything kind of resets now because everyone has gone back to base. They bought the items. Summoner spells are back. You know, you've got flashes on the side of SKT all of a sudden. So setting up that play we saw earlier in the game, well, that took quite some time. It was one arrow into another arrow into another arrow. You might not have the chance to fire three arrows before you get your big reward again, because suddenly the game is going to be more fast-paced now, and we're going to get big fights. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to, and I'm very excited so far. We've seen SKT with some great map-based decisions and, 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 you know, strategic moves. And G2, they set up some very good early game plays with champions that we had question marks around. How is the leasing going to work? How is the Specs Renekton going to work? It definitely showed up, but now these next five to 10 minutes will be the most telling. There's no room for error for G2 with their team composition. Yeah, and you also have to wonder, 
uh, the way they're going to play team fights, and also look at the way SKT is itemizing. Notice the Phantom Dancer on Bang as well as the Ninja Tommy. That's because Expect and Trick are the ones that are going to be trying to dive him. So instead of Hurricane, which most teams use for wave clear on the Varus, uh, he's gone for the Phantom Dancer for the damage reduction in duels, which he'll most likely be in against Expect. So I really like that choice since the team of SKT doesn't lack in wave clear in any way because of Galio and Cindy. Well, Perks definitely does not want to get caught out. I think you find that cleanse prematurely. Bang, not able to lock him down. And some pressure from SKT. They are the ones trying to set up the plays, despite the very short range, CC, or, you know, shorter range than the Ash Arrow. Well, we get this point in the game where they're kind of just pushing waves to each other. And then you look for that little opening to get maybe one kill that can then resolve, resolve in a tower or a dragon. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually get the big openings yet. It's all about getting an advantage in the side lane pushes. Bot lane, you're gonna see Sven go down, push out that lane, and then he's gonna roam mid and hope to find Bang with an arrow, which can then give a mid tower to G2. And currently, G2 does have the map pressure. They're the ones that have more forward wards into SKT territory, and they have the wave generally on their side of the map. So this is the time where they're gonna wanna try and get that back, but Perks needs to avoid as much poke as possible. Yeah, G2 needs to win the top side, because they gave that Rift Hell buff to expect on this Renekton. If he's not able to push in, Puni, well then suddenly it's actually all for nothing and they traded that tier 2 tower for a very, very, very small advantage. They didn't really gain them anything. Huni can always roam towards the mid lane, walk or use his ulti to join a fight really quickly. And for Huni, itemization has been very simple into the Renekton and the Ash. He's just got full armor right now. If a shockwave is used on him, then he'll be pretty happy as Faker Bang Peanut will be comfy. It's another Cloud Drake that is started off here by SKT. Winds of War comes up by Huni, is trying to zone away. Remember that Idol of Duran, gigantic AoE taunt. SKT easily secure the second dragon of the game. Sven gets tagged up, there's the Justice Punch into the taunt. Trick is able to jump away, two-man stun from Faker. And Justice trading, waiting for one player to make a misstep. SKT Whoa. first, Whoa. and that dragon. Wide left. Really wide left on the Ash Arrow from Sven right there. Maybe he thought Faker was going to continue to move down, but just a bad skill shot there using the Ash Arrow. And also, they gave up the position they had acquired earlier in the Drake Pit. They kind of allowed SKT to walk in. A lot of that is that Huni is so difficult to kill right now. Perks doesn't want to waste his cooldowns just to poke down the galley. Got to go like a few seconds uh, back before the dragon even died, and then look at how G2 actually lost the push in every single lane, and then SKT just walked the dragon first, started it, and when G2 tried to run down and stop them, realized we're actually not in a position to fight at the moment. G2 really wants to try and catch a guy out of position right now, because otherwise you're dealing with that big front line of Hoopy. Well, SKT there going forward once again, just blowing perks up. Comboing the CC together, and that just looks so <laughs> simple. Perks did not expect that damage. Guaranteed. No, he he uh, not flash. He would have flashed yes. the collateral damage if he thought it would kill him. He definitely did not expect Peanut to just take him down with that ulti, but he died. We'll be able to defend how SKT moving straight towards the Baron area. Oh, it's just such beautiful play from SKT. They've got themselves a 2,000 gold lead. They've got both dragons, and now they're threatening Baron. Expect has got teleports available, but it is a four on five at best. Yeah, Hawkshot comes through, though, gives them a little bit of information. No one is necessarily stopping Trick from getting here, which means SKT wants to use this as a bait. SKT could have gone for that top lane tower here. You see the minions near the inhib turret of G2 Esports, but they started the Baron. Maybe to try and hope that G2 would rush in to try and stop them and then get engaged on. But G2 actually played that really well. They just slowed down and said, you're actually not going to kill that. You're just going to take a lot of damage. Very difficult to do a 22-minute Baron, especially with this team comp of SKT that do doesn't have any necessary Baron shredders like a Cassiopeia, Callista, or Vayne. So good job by G2 to just patiently wait it out, push the top lane, hawk shot in, and kind of dare SKT to stay on Baron. Because if SKT would have stayed on Baron, they would have been so low that G2 actually could have won that 4v5. This is a play from before here where Perks does not expect the damage. He not goes against him, we get even a Galio ulti coming in, and then at this point, Perks can just flash away. Yeah, it looked like Wolf got the Thunderlord's proc from his make it rain, which was just enough right before the collateral damage hit, so Perks, unlucky. It's been a good game so far though, I feel, from Perks. Like, he's actually been under a lot of pressure in the mid lane, there's a lot of roams towards him. 
barely got caught up by any of them. Two kills on Oriana, two items now. I like the fact he didn't go for Abyssal Scepter, but just went for the MR boots. Mm -hmm. You don't want Abyssal when you're the only magic damage dealer. That really counts, because obviously this Zyra here will take a while before you want to buffer up your damage as well. Well, yeah, talking about two items, both Ludens Echo and Renanomicon for the respective mid laners. Black Cleaver, Cowl, Tiamat for expect in the top lane. It's the Frozen Fist from Huni. And of course, uh, Hurricane versus Phantom Dancer, as you guys have already spoken about. Do you want to slightly change the point from before there? Because Mithy is actually building AP on Zyra. We've seen a lot of redemption rushes, but he's going AP. So obviously his damage will be very relevant, but still not enough for perks to go Abyssal Scepter over all the very key items. Yeah, redemptionless game, Wolf moving towards a Black Cleaver as well. But there's another chance, Dodge by Faker. Ah, uh, Faker's left again. Sidestep, he's got the Ghost down. Trying to dodge around. SKT using Baron as a very big bait. G2 don't have an answer just yet. And Cooney down in the bottom lane. He's going to shove that wave out. SKT does not have any walls around Baron. So they're actually not really baiting G2 into a, anything because there is enough ways to get vision down for G2 and not lose it again. It's again at this point where we kind of stuck with both teams just pushing to each other back and forth. And then we're waiting for that one ulti that hits that actually starts a fight or creates a pick. Yeah, and there's multiple people that can create the fight. It doesn't have to be Sven's Asher. It can be Perk's Trick or Mithy from the side of G2. And it can pretty much be Huni, Faker, or Bang from SKT. It's just a matter of having the right vision and being willing to go for the play because at this point, both teams are playing fairly safe and going for that high percentage play. Oh, long range. Force of will there. Catches Trick out. And really, that's kind of one of the primary initiating tools, Faker. Managing to get that out. Justice Punch comes backwards and Trick, even though he's taunted up by the idol, He's not really going to have enough threat just yet. Shockwave comes down, catches up, bang. Tower is still alive. The Unleashed Power kills Trick. Faker does not care. And now SKT wait for the next mini wave. Well, maybe they're peeling towards River. Well, Siege is just so strong for SKT with MF, Varus, Graves, and Syndra. And G2, with this Renekton, just not able to win the side lane. So they're forced to just sit and try and defend against all the pokes. All right, Sven gets caught up by the taunt. Mithy's going to be the target, though, on the back end. Moody continues to focus down the members of G2. Bullet time is going to shred G2 as much as it can, but expect managers to survive. It's a one-for-two trade. At the end of the day, SKT maintain pressure, extend their lead, and they are the ones dictating the map. Yeah, SKT is setting up shop in that mid lane and making plays happen. What was interesting there, though, is SKT was on a different feat than Faker. Huni flashed over the Raptor Pit, I believe, to get that taunt, but Faker was pushing top lane. So if you're wondering why that fight didn't just slide all the way over to SKT's favor, it's because they didn't actually have as much damage follow-up as you would think. We're gonna go back all the way to the start of this one. Yeah, Huni able to move first from the bottom lane, where expect still trying to kill the minions, meaning now SKT with five members mid can go for a play even under the tower. Great setup, easy kill onto Trick. And now it should have been just one kill for SKT, but yeah, this is Huni going in. Yeah. He does just just punch and then flash ultimate. But if you notice, the rest of SKT still need to get minions to the turret. Huni ends up dying in an extended one for one trade uh, just based off of Huni's flash. We said earlier, obviously, Huni, he not make less of these mistakes now they're playing for SKT under Kuma, but it will still happen from time to time. We have seen it in the LCK a few times here and there. Happen now. Overall, though, SKT with the Siege Kong. They are also winning the side in with this Galio pick. It's been doing really well. It actually means that GG needs to find a TP location for Expect so he can join the fight. If they're not able to get him into a fight with a proper TP flank, his value in this game will just keep going down and down and down compared to the Galio. It's one of the oldest stories in competitive League of Legends, Renekton in the late game. We're 28 minutes in, we're, we're starting to get to that point, and SKT, despite some of the little mishaps um, in the early stages of the game, it hasn't really made a difference. G2, their Ash Arrows haven't found the right targets, and their wave pressure hasn't resulted in objectives. Yeah, G2 does not have a ward on this dragon here. If they had a ward on dragon, they could have actually gone to Baron and started it to force a fight where Peanut would have been late, but they didn't actually see him take it down until now, and then it's obviously a little bit too late. Yeah, and I do feel like G2's drag control has been mostly non-existent, and that does consistently hurt them. Can they get an Ash Arrow? Oh. Oh. Well, you can't catch the strut. Yeah, Zen has had some poor aim on some Ash Arrows, but SKT has also always been very good at dodging initiations and skill shots, and that is amplified when you have stuff like the Misfortune who has Make It Rain and the Double Cloud Drakes, which gives them all that move speed when out of combat. All right, a little bit of a fight up in the top lane. Sven's gonna try and chase down with that Ranger's focus. Hooney may not be able to survive. Uses the ultimate to escape! 
It's a heroic exit. <laughs> Uni gets out. But we got to see some of the damage here from Sven and of course expect against him. Now meaning they're forcing him back to base and once again, G2 around this Baron here, they have control wards on the Baron itself and they're trying to look for that one pick with the Ash Arrow. Another member we can do it is Trix Lee Sin. Early game action, check. Mid to late game engages with flashy kicks. No, not yet. And we want to see that as well because they have actually the setup here, Baron. Oh man, but they were also hitting the ward as they started Baron, which gave momentary reveal to the killer right there. So SKT easily able to move in. Yeah, that was miscommunication. Uh, Trick thought they would just kill the ward and back out, while the rest of G2 were probably falling to actually start the Baron. So just a little bit of a mixed call there for from G2 Esports. Now forces them back and allows SKT to take these control wards down. Yeah, and just going back about 45 seconds to when Huni nearly died to expect and Sven up in the top lane. Despite Huni having 330 armor, which he's itemized almost exclusively, he still was getting relatively shredded through. It's about five to 10 seconds for the two of them to kill him because they have the Black Cleaver shred from expect as well as the last Whisper and Blade of the Rune King already, for, already from Sven. So. If they can catch him in isolated situations, by no means is he unkillable. But that time frame, five to 10 seconds, is far too long in a big team fight. Well, there's two caveats there. If they can catch him alone, and if they can get 10 seconds yeah. to get through the front line. And of course, with Bang, itemizing with that slightly defensive Ninja Tabby and Phantom Dancer, maybe he can fend off any pressure from Trick early on. Look, it's still a 3,000 gold game here for SKT. They got their third dragon a little while ago. There'll still be one more cloud before Elder. And SKT can quite literally run circles around G2 right now. Well, I'm still very glad to see G2 go back towards this Baron setup here and actually be allowed to, to set up these control wards because it is really the way for them to win the game, force and engage without SKT having proper vision, and then suddenly that 3k goal lead might not mean a lot if one guy from SKT dies instantly. Yeah, exactly. The gold is still close as well, and there's no cleanses or McHales anywhere on SKT. So even though Sven hasn't landed the arrow yet, if he lands the right one, it could be big. All right, Trick is caught up by the chain of corruption, though. He was looking for Peanut. Cooney's now going to just his punch forward, and Perks is able to sidestep, but the tower's the focus. Yeah, SKT have a ton of control now. Look at the low health bars already on G2. So SKT is pretty much entirely full, pushing up mid lane, and they can always fade back for Baron. Watch Cooney just control whatever space he walks into because he's so tanky. Now there's simply no threat or response to the threat for G2. SKT take their sixth tower of the game. There is nothing left outside the base for G2, but G2 Esports, they have not given up just yet. Oh, this could get so, so risky. Trick is going to dash forward to the Sonic Wave. Bullet time comes down. Look at Perks waiting in the wings, looking for a Shockwave. Hoonie's being shredded. He's had the five, the six, the seven seconds. Shockwave tags him down, but SKT simply not dead yet, and expects is way too late to the party. We've seen this now multiple times. G2 are trying to set up a play, they fail the execution, and then SKT just respond by saying, great, we either get a kill or a tower from you guys. And they just respond so well to that missed opportunity from G2 Esport. It started with the arrow from Sven, and then Trick couldn't hit, land his Sonic Wave, he had to dip back away, and suddenly, you had no position in mid. And SKT can return to the offensive right now. Hootie coming in! Oh, Perks is in so much trouble. Collateral damage takes him down. Hootie's looking for more. Already used the taunt though, and Teleport in for the kill. What is the objective SKT want right now? Gonna be a kick backwards. Okay, 10 seconds is the timer. Nine, eight, who needs being killed, but there's not enough time. G2 don't have the damage, and Trick goes down to Peanuts. And if taking Perks down wasn't enough to force a five-man Baron, taking down the enemy jungler probably is. Faker going to continue to threaten people with Cinder because the rest of the team can turn and burn this Baron. Such exceptional play from SKT. The remaining members of G2 trying to make their way up to the mid lane. Actually, zero content on this Baron. Expect instead is going to farm up that gigantic wave in the top lane. And the coffin has been laid out. SKT with Baron looking to close it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we get to see Galio, you know, first game here in the group stage. We saw it a lot in the play-ins. A lot of good performances from him. He won almost every single game except for one. And Huni in this game here, he survived the laning phase against Expect. He's been able to actually push the side lane consistently. And then he's just roamed to mid lane every single time and tried to look for some of these picks here with his taunt. Yeah, right place, right time. And you compare the team fight presence of Expect versus Huni, and it's not even close. Now he has the Spirit Visage as well, so Perks won't have any chance of bursting. We even saw in that last fight when Huni just had the Kindle Gem, the Shockwave barely scratched him. So add that to the fact that SKT is 
approaching four items on Faker. They still have a lot of damage from Bang, and they're just going to continue to try and move around this map and dictate the pace to G2. I think if you, you know, step back and you look at the game as a whole as we get close to 35 minutes, this is somewhat what was expected coming in. I think G2 looked pretty good in the early stages of the game, but SKT, their poise, their control, their response to everything G2 threw at them, this is the reason. They're the defending world champions, the defending MSI champions, the, the number one team in the world. Uh, it didn't even cost them anything despite some of their uh, uncharacteristic mistakes. Yeah, I mean, it's what we talked about coming into the game, how starting out with SKT often means that you will get your first loss very early on. But SKT has, of course, dropped games in the past in group stages in best of ones. But in this one here, they've actually been able to just punish G2 Esports in this mid to late game. Because it's been engages from G2 that backfired, were missed Ash arrows, or Lee Sin never really finding a way to the back line. And then SKT have just been playing that slow and steady game where we're just gonna take your towers. Yeah, I will say Trick has never been able to find any of those flanks, and that was a big question when they picked it early. They could have had more late game reliability, or even mid game reliability, had they gone with something like the Ivern, but they opted not to. And the small early game lead they may have gotten with them is negated here by the way SKT is playing the map. Yeah, the play style that G2 actually put into the Rift today it has been benefited with an Ivern instead. However, that is hindsight. That is something they'll have to talk about. Remember, G2 will play another game later today, as will SKT. And SKT are now knocking on the inhibitor turrets, top and middle. Hooney is having expect number. Nothing that expect can do. And for now, G2 are holding off this siege and this push. SKT, of course, respecting the fact that we are fairly late into the game and there are three to four items completed. So despite the gold advantage, you look at an Orianna with three and a half items right now, you do not want to get caught by that shockwave if you're Sinner, if you're Varus, because you can then still die. The so waiting here, another arrow goes wide. Trick, though, he's trying. Uh, Trick can't find anybody. Unleashed power has already been used. Heroic entrance from Huni will bring him to the mid lane from top. Trick did force a flash from Faker though. Faker respected the fact that kick flash could happen from the Lee Sin, so he flashed early, but they're pushing bot lane now. Oh, they absolutely do. S SKT are gonna take down the tower already. Justice Punch will set up position for Expect. He's down, Dominus didn't even matter. Lithy's been forced away by the poke, and SKT take the first inhibitor of the MSI 2017. Shockwave also completely whiffed from G2, so that means SKT can continue this offensive. All right, let's see, what can they take? SKT backing away, a little bit of damage on Tahuni, but it doesn't matter. Spin steps forward from the Winds of War. He's not going to find any further damage. Defensive flash from Huni. <laughs> but SKT don't care. Look at this. Faker and Peanut, they've taken down another tower in the mid lane. Trick has still got access to that Dragon's Rage, but there's no damage following up. They're too far away. It's going to look forward. Sonic Wave unable to connect, and SKT 10,000 gold lead and the base is broken for G2. And it's once again that situation where G2 try and start the fight. Everyone from SKT disengage and then instantly they react. Okay, bot lane, that's where we're pushing. Take down the tower, take down the Renekton, and suddenly G2 Esports, after using their engage, and didn't manage to get anything, well, you're not really gonna win a fight then. Exactly, contrast SKT's coordination in the middle of late game with that of G2, where G2 is fighting oftentimes 4v5 and then expect alts on the side of a fight after it's already over and can't find his way in. And yes, G2 does have initiation. SKT has a little bit more poke in their team composition, but more so, SKT has just been dodging so many of the engages, it's making it seem like G2 have no tools. Because at least Sin, Oriana, Ash, Zyra, absolutely has initiation tools, but it doesn't feel like it against SKT. Yeah, every single arrow that's been fired by Sven has been questionable at best yep. over the last 20 minutes. And also, you know, just to remind you, Sven, of course, loading up with the wrong keystone. A little bit of jitters on stage when they start their campaign here towards MSI playoffs. Ooh, right now, Trick is actually behind SKT. I don't think they saw him hide here in the Wolf Camp. No flashes on Faker and Bang. If he can get onto one of those two guys, that could be a kill for G2. Oh. Bang, bang! He gets caught, he's been kicked backwards. Ash Arrow this time lands. The heroic entrance will not trick up into the air. Perks has killed Bang. Trick is able to flash away, but it's a one for one. ADC for support. Expect has been exhausted in the back line. He's not doing enough. Now Pina collateral damage comes down. Sven Perks is able to survive for a few seconds longer. Hooney goes down, but it's just the GA. Wolf is lingering out in the edges of the fight. It's a one for one so far, and SKT disengaged. 
And it's really important to highlight when Huni ulties to save a team member, that team member gets 50% damage reduction as well. So it actually takes a much longer to take down a guy like Bang. Yeah, it gives you an example of how much damage was blown into Bang. Yes, they get the kill, but even after that, it's SKT who tries to get the pressure. Faker's in deep, though. He is indeed looking for Miffy. He's gonna find him! The Dark Spears and Force of Will in a 1v4! Faker finds his man! Faker always finds a way. He gives up first blood. Mithy says it's unfair. He then starts to 2v1. Goes in 1v4, finishes off Mithy, and what are you gonna do? Good to see Trick, though, finally actually find the back line in the last fight. Obviously, just to change that, it is 40% damage reduction from Huni when he comes in. Doesn't change a whole lot, and it was enough to obviously try and buy time for SKT. One for one fight, in the end, two for one with Faker's play. Two for one with Faker's play, and unfortunately for G2, it is just too late. They needed those fights, those picks 20 minutes ago. To give you a quick update about the pause, uh, Miffy is querying one of the skill shots landing, uh, I believe his E. Um, has requested a review. Yeah, he said his E should have landed. Paused is asking for the review, so they are currently reviewing that. I would think we're going to get a replay. We can try and make a judgment on that as well. He also died, so I wonder if he was dead in the Edens. I didn't see it super clearly, but that's obviously what they're reviewing right now. I want to keep a close eye on that and keep you updated. 40 minutes into the game, G2 finally make this combination work. Took and them long enough. It did, it did. But I think you have to step back and look at this. G2 also making a statement this game, right? Huni with the Galio, maybe a little surprising, but the Lee Sin for Trick, he's had some good plays. Um, the early game setup was clean. And for G2, they're okay at the start, although they were expected to lose. Heavy underdogs this match. Yeah, I mean, holding on for now and, and trying to go even in these late game fights is obviously a good thing uh, from G2. Problem is they're just always losing a little bit more. Like whenever they trade yeah. one for one, it's also an in-hit for SKT, or maybe that's a kill follow-up. Let's see the, uh, the fight from before. Yeah, we're gonna get to see. So what we're paused for is watch Mithy's E. Should it have hit Faker? No, that seemed like, like Faker just sidestepped it. Definitely seemed like the stun was over. Yeah. Faker got to move again. Mm -hmm. And of course, the E from Mithy seemed to hit where Faker was actually stunned before. I also think I saw Faker just throw down his, his uh, ghost as well. Just yep. giving that a little bit of extra movement speed. We'll wait for the league officials to give us the final call, but at least to our eyes, it feels like that, that was a miss. Yeah, League Ops has determined it should not have hit, so they're getting ready check, and we should be right back into the game. I think one of the bigger stories for SKT this game, though, is, yes, we had some missteps from Faker early. We had the SKT bottom lane going a little over aggressive at times, but I thought Peanut and Huni have been completely on point. Huni has commanded so much presence, and Peanut has been the one sneaking in those kills at the back end, not to mention heavily out-pressured and out-farmed trick throughout this game. Oh, yes. Been a big difference in the top lane. I actually think G2 are a little bit surprised at what Galio brings to the table. Not saying they don't understand what the champion is doing, but we saw moments where they were trying like trade tower pushes and then Galio would just wave clear it. They probably didn't respect that part. The damage reduction Galio's ulti brings when they try and create a pick. Like mm. it's been very difficult for G2 to deal with this Galio pick here. And that's kind of what we hoped in a way, because then if Galio can make his way into like the ST of the top laners and we get to see him almost every game, that would be very exciting. And if it's not the ST of every game and it ends up getting banned, what are you losing in exchange for that, right? How does the game change exactly. around Galio that has kind of, I don't want to say surprised us because Galio has been seeing more and more play. Loading back into the game just to give you a start. 40 minutes in, SKT yep. have responded to everything G2 have thrown at them and simply outplayed Europe's number one squad. This is the engage we get from Trick where he was hiding behind SKT. Ulti comes in for Huni, so Banks stays alive a little longer. They will get the kill and end up trading one for one. Yeah, and after the one for one, then it is still just a bit of a team fight, right? Trick is dead, but Sven, as well as Perks, do get pushed out of the fight by Peanut for a little bit of it. Huni then taking the full 10 seconds pretty much for his Guardian Angel to go down. The fight ends up resetting. Let's see, we're back now. Let's see what SKT actually wants to do. Baron is alive, 40 minutes into the game, still a massive goal lead in favor of SKT. No fourth item completed for Perks just yet. Ready for Sven though, so the carries from G2 are not weak at this point. Well, they've got some difficulties because there's two lanes of super minions pouring through. Look at the vision that SKT is working with. 
So SKT, for G2. SKT has not placed a ward in the Baron Pit, so they don't actually get to see the blue trinket that's placed by G2 unless they step into the Baron Pit itself <laughs> to kill it. Uh, a lot of teams like to just place a ward in there just for safety to always spot these blue trinkets. SKT this time around, they will find it later once they go to the Baron. A little bit of an oopsie. Yeah, and a lot of this is actually a timing game. They're waiting for the wave of super minions in the bottom lane to full expect away, because right now G2 is hoping that SKT try a 5v5 fight. They're going to move up there and get the ward right now. Yeah, and it's not really like an oopsie, because you're not supposed to actually place a ward on red side in the Baron pit, because you're supposed to place it in the river and in the yeah. entrance to G2's jungle. You just have to obviously go back and then check time to time that, you know, there is a potential blue ward you have to kill, which they just did right now. Trick is uh, having fun with the dragon. But Hello, uh, Trick. Oh, he's holding They're cutting on. you off, man. Gets out of range of the Justice Punch. Has already used the Dragon's Rage. Okay, Elder Dragon is the focus here for SKT with four elementals. Here's the thing, even if G2 steals it, they don't get that big of a reward. So this is really smart by SKT to just full force the Elder. We're gonna secure it uncontested here. Shockwave actually was thrown down. That means it was contested, but Hina easily able to secure that with the Smite. 402, he's Flame Horizon trick on that Graves. Sniped so many G2 members of that collateral damage and really just been everywhere his team has needed him for the entirety of this game. You do now need to give up this Baron against the four Drake, Elder Drake. It's not exactly what you want to fight right now, but they will be forced into some sort of team fight because SKT with Baron buff Elder Drake as well. Plus their advantage will just force it. Yeah, SKT did that exactly right. They get the Elder Drake, they get the Baron, they empowered recall, they elixir up because multiple people were sitting on max items. You even see a serrated Dirk coming in from Wolf. Now they can just <laughs> power five hand push down those inhibitors once again. Probably even go for inhibitor number three and try and get the full complete victory. G2 here trying to set up a fanatic death rush. Problem for them is uh, right now, SKT are just pushing top and mid lane. So. When there are no doors on your house, you cannot sit in the backyard of your enemy <laughs> and hope that they'll be setting up a barbecue. Anyways, SKT with Baron of Hard minions and one, two cannons up in this top lane. They're just gonna try apply some pressure. Cooney is throwing out those winds of war from the flank of G2, and it feels like just a matter of time until somebody gets caught out here. Or Sven decides to throw down the arrow. It catches on to Wolf. Hoonies coming in from the side. Heroic entrance will save Peanut's life, and expect is the man that goes down. He's already been popped at G8. Not gonna be used. As it stands, SKT will take a third inhibitor. The bottom one has respawned, so will the middle one very, very soon. Really got to see the damage reduction of the Galio ult come in huge there because Pina looked like he was way further up than he should have been, but he still survives thanks to Galio and the heal from Bang. And this allows SKT to take down their third inhibitor and prep the final push. Uh, such beautiful play from SKT. A little bit longer than maybe some people would have expected. Credit to G2 for making that happen, but as it stands, they just ran out of ammunition in the mid game. SKT, Baron, and Elder sieging down the Nexus turret. Trick's gonna look forward. He finds a kick onto Bang, but the roof misses once again. Mythicon lock him down. So Bang survives. Nexus turret number one is down. Trick's trying to buy time. The Nexus is the focus. And SK Telecom stop their campaign for MSI 2017. Mid to late game. SKT managed to punish G2 Esports whenever there were a fail engage, a missed skill shot. So often did we see it in this game from G2 Esports, and every single time SKT to kill a dragon or tower. And so many times SKT was able to find the right fight in part because they never let the opponent do the same. They are so good at dodging any initiation G2 was trying to throw at them. After there was that five-man dive from G2 in the bottom turret in the early game, that was pretty much it as far as proactive plays that G2 could make, and the rest of the game was all SKT. And that is an exciting time for an SKT fan. And we need to see who's going to compete with them, right? SKT traditionally a little bit slow out of the gates. Made yeah. a few, few mistakes today, but really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. And what was a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's your first game right now of the tournament for SKT. It's fine if it's a little bit yeah. shaky here and there. It's the standard, honestly, for yeah. them. If they get the win, that's the important part. A big yawn from Wolf. Like, oh, here we are again. Oh, I guess that was 44 minutes. That was longer than we expected. <laughs> Their average game time was much lower this year. But you can tell SKT knows they're in for the long haul. Peanut attending his